Chapter 811. Chapter 811. Giant Beast White River City, War God's Temple. For a long time, players had seldom visited this place. However, due to the appearance of the Abyss Battlefield, it had become a popular hub for players. Independent team recruiting members, those who want the double EXP buff, come on over. Town Reclamation Team Recruiting. Minimum requirement of level 30. Equipment must be at least mysterious iron rank. Must have reached the Trial Tower's second floor. Noobs, do not disturb. Looking for players to carry me through the Abyss Battlefield. Five silver for 100 honor points. Limited spots available. First come, first served. Shortly after the new expansion pack launched, everyone had adapted to the new changes. Many players had already gained some experience of the playstyle in the Abyss Battlefield. Shi Feng was very surprised when he arrived. He had not expected everyone to adapt to the Abyss Battlefield so quickly. The Abyss Battlefield was a paradise for experts, particularly solo experts. Due to the Abyss Battlefield's appearance, many solo experts had been able to shine brilliantly in the past, creating countless legends in God's domain. The Abyss Battlefield back then had also shortened the gap between independent players and guild players. One of the main reasons for this was the EXP gain. Guild members could accumulate the double EXP buff in their guild residences. Although the accumulated double EXP buff did not seem like much, ordinary players could not fight for long periods. All players needed a break at some point, whether it was to repair their weapons and equipment or to recover their concentration and stamina. Overall, a large part of a player's time in the game was spent resting. Hence, the difference the double EXP buff created became significant. However, it was extremely difficult for independent players to accumulate the double EXP buff. Aside from purchasing a house of their own in NPC cities, the only other option was to rest in a player-built city. This further highlighted the importance of the Abyss Battlefield. Players would earn honor points corresponding to their performance on the battlefield. They could trade those honor points for the double EXP buff, or potions. Powerful solo experts could easily earn a large number of honor points, and the double EXP buff they could purchase was far more than guild players. In addition, these solo experts were strong enough to kill monsters of a higher level. Overall, solo experts were able to level only slightly slower than guild experts. Aside from the EXP buff, honor points could also be traded for top-tier equipment. Although the equipment's attributes leaned more towards PvP, it was still valuable. The various large guilds also took advantage of the Abyss Battlefield to grind for top-tier equipment. There were many bosses in the Abyss Battlefield. Every town that monsters conquered would contain multiple bosses. The weakest among these bosses were lords, while most were great lords. Some towns were even protected by high lords or mythic monsters. Guilds didn't need to look far to find field bosses. However, although there were many advantages to the Abyss Battlefield, it had its downsides as well. Every player who entered the battlefield was allotted one life each day. In addition, the monsters dropped neither materials nor money, they only dropped weapons and equipment. If one's goal was purely to obtain top-tier equipment, the Abyss Battlefield was the perfect place for them. Shi Feng led his team into the Abyss Battlefield. After entering the Abyss Battlefield, players were transported to the human race's campsite. As soon as Shi Feng and the others arrived, they were greeted by a sea of players. White River City's players weren't the only ones who had gathered at this campsite. Players had arrived from every city in Star Moon Kingdom. They were all gearing up and preparing to set out. However, as this was a battlefield, one could see wandering abyssal monsters in every direction. Players General, Lai formed 100-man groups in the Abyss Battlefield. That way, they had a higher chance of survival. After all, the longer they remained alive, the more opportunities they would have to earn honor points. This run has been the best. I earned 500 points during this run. I can afford a basic double EXP potion. I'll get 10% of the double EXP buff with that. I might be able to reach level 32 by the end of the day. That's nothing. I heard that the players in Heaven's Burial's main army have conquered a town. With the honor points they earned, they can purchase three basic double EXP potions. For those that perform well, they might even earn enough points to buy a basic body strengthening potion. 
Wow, that much? One of those potions could improve my attributes by 10% and reduce my stamina consumption by 15% for two hours. The basic body strengthening potion costs five times as much as the basic double EXP potion. What did you think? They cleared out the abyssal monsters of an entire town. Naturally, they received a ton of honor points. The various guilds are dispatching their armies to clear out these monster towns. With enough basic body strengthening potions, raiding dungeons will be a breeze. It's a pity that my guild is so small. We are nowhere near strong enough to clear out a town. The players around the campsite chatted as they stood in line to repair their weapons and equipment. They envied the players who had joined large guilds. Unlike those players, they had to accumulate honor points slowly by killing wandering abyssal monsters in the abyss battlefield's outermost regions. Let's go! Shi Feng opened the battlefield's map. After examining it for a moment, he headed towards the nearest small ruined city. Wow, those guys got guts! They are leaving the campsite with just a 20-man team. Are they tired of living? I think they're experts. So what if they're experts? Once they start fighting, they'll learn that even experts are useless here. Moreover, didn't you see which direction they went? They are heading towards South Lake City. None of the players who have gone there have returned alive. The players resting at the campsite fell into a heated discussion when they saw Shi Feng's group of cloaked figures. The Abyss battlefield was comprised of various regions. Different regions had different threat levels. The outermost region was the safest. However, there were far fewer monsters here. Players could not earn many honor points with so few targets. More monsters wandered around the outer region of towns, most being elites with a few chieftains thrown in the mix. Ordinary players who ventured into these areas quickly lost their lives. However, one could earn quite a sum of honor points if they survived. Monsters were abundant inside a town. There were also plenty of lord-ranked monsters present. Sometimes, even great lords would appear in towns. A party of players would find it very difficult to survive. As for small cities, these were considered monster nests. When players entered the city, their attributes were suppressed immediately. Generally, great lords guarded these small cities. Sometimes, one even encountered a mythic monster. Even a 100-man elite team would find it very difficult to survive here. Grand Lords generally ruled over medium cities, and players had a very high possibility of encountering a mythic monster. In large-sized cities, players were guaranteed to find a mythic monster waiting for them. Even a guild-organized 1,000-man army risked a one-way trip by attempting to challenge these locations. Naturally, Shi Feng understood the battlefield's layout. He was far more familiar with the battlefield's rules than any other player. To grind for Great Lords, towns were the safest choice. However, Shi Feng had a time limit, hence he had no choice but to pick a small city. After traveling for over two hours, Shi Feng and the others finally arrived at South Lake City. The entire city had become a nest for abyssal monsters. One could smell the rich scent of blood from Ha, the city's edge. Is that a Grand Lord? Autumn Goose's heart pounded when she saw the giant monster, which was over 100 meters long, hovering above the city. Chapter 812. Chapter 812. Siege. How can a monster be so massive? Every member of the party was flabbergasted as the watched the massive figure in the sky. This was a bone dragon with a body that stretched over a hundred meters and a wingspan that covered over two hundred meters. As its name suggested, its entire body was made of bone. Its massive skeletal head loomed like a small mountain. Smoldering green fire danced in its hollow eye sockets. The bone dragon created storms with every flap of its skeletal wings. Frost bone, undead, Grand Lord. Level 45 HP, 64,000, 64,000. This was the first time Autumn Goose and her companions had ever seen a Grand Lord, and they stared, struggling to breathe. The Frostbone Dragon had a staggering 64,000 HP. However, this was not the Bone Dragon's biggest threat. At the rank of Grand Lord, a monster could inflict a powerful mental pressure, preventing players from exerting their full strength. That thing can probably instant kill me with its breath attack. Gunfire involuntarily gulped as he watched the Bone Dragon circle above the city. Are we really going to kill monsters here? There are too many. 
Blue Bamboo asked worriedly as she glanced at the sea of abyssal monsters within the city walls. Undead, elite, level 42 HP 140,000, 40,000. These skeleton soldiers bore a shield and weapon in each hand. They also stood together in large groups with over a hundred other skeleton soldiers. If they fought one of those skeleton squads, it was highly likely that they would attract even more skeleton soldiers. Skeleton captains also roamed the city. Undead chieftain. Level 42 HP 1,300,000, 1,300,000. If they fought here, an endless stream of monsters could easily surround them. Their chances of survival would plummet. Why don't we check somewhere else? Autumn Goose suggested. They could deal with these numbers if they were merely common monsters. However, the weakest monster in the city was an elite. Chieftains even called this city home. Even a 20-man team had little hope of surviving this place. Although they knew Shi Feng and the others were quite strong, the skeleton captains were not isolated. From where they stood, they could spot as many as six captains. Who knew how many more would appear once they started fighting? It was simply too dangerous to fight here. Relax, you guys just need to watch from the sidelines. Shi Feng laughed, not bothering to explain. After stabilizing their mental states, Fire Dance and the others burst into action. Ordinary experts might struggle against this sea of monsters. To Zero Wing's core members, however, this wasn't even a challenge. This was a paradise. Fire Dance and Flying Shadow charged into the crowd of skeleton soldiers, luring the elite monsters. Meanwhile, Minor Wind and the other range classes launched their bombardment from a distance. Immediately, they had attracted the attention of nearly 800 skeleton soldiers and three skeleton captains. Autumn Goose and her friend's anxiety mounted. The army of skeleton soldiers and the three-meter-tall skeleton captains that wore black, thorny armor seemed to have an unstoppable momentum as they charged to meet Zero Wing's group. Death Wind, who stood between his team and the monsters, felt a massive pressure weigh him down. Just as the skeleton soldiers were about to reach the team, Kola, Yewumian, and Turtle Dove made their move. Justice Roar, Angry Howl. The three MTs tore the aggro from the small team and forced the monsters to focus on them. Take this. Kola raised his flaming divine blue fire shield and bashed it into the approaching crowd. Boom, with one hit, the MT sent the leading skeleton soldiers into a backward tumble. Kola then used devotion, and a golden glow blossomed over an area of 15 to 15 yards, a damage of around minus 500 points appearing above the head of every skeleton soldier. As for Turtle Dove and Yewumian, they also dominated over their opponents. With each crash, they knocked down a group of skeleton soldiers. When they used an AoE skill, they devoured hundreds of HP from several dozen soldiers. The three MTs stood like an iron wall as they blocked the undead's advance. The three skeleton captains had just as much trouble. Even against the chieftain's attacks, Kola and the others did not retreat by a single step. They dodged the majority of the attacks sent at them, launching counterattacks and dealing over Maeda 2000 damage to each chieftain. So strong, gunfire could not help his shock. Not only could these three MTs hold back the hundreds of elite monsters and three chieftains, but they also dodged most of the incoming attacks, barely losing any HP. They should have stabilized the aggro by now. Let's start attacking as well, Blackie said excitedly. As Blackie spoke, he activated Stars of Light. Aqua Rose also used the Tier 1 spell Death and Decay. Meanwhile, Shi Feng had switched to the Aura of Fire and activated Firestorm. At this time, Kola and the others suddenly stomped the three skeleton captains, causing all three to lose their balance and fall to the ground. Immediately after, the three MTs retreated. In the next moment, the area before Kola and the others transformed into hell itself. Huge stars fell from the sky, black smoke emerged from the ground, and fire erupted into the air. The ground shook as if the end of the world had arrived. Boom. Boom. After several seconds, most of the 800 or so skeleton soldiers had been annihilated. The three skeleton captains had lost close to half of their HP. Everyone's level bars exploded with EXP. Blue Bamboo even leveled up on the spot, climbing from level 34 to level 35. At this time, Kola and the others slammed their shields into the three skeleton captains and began building their aggro once more. 
Meanwhile, Shadow Sword and Rampant Blade used charge and appeared before a skeleton captain. They then swung their greatswords at the chieftain's joints, momentarily freezing the captain's movement. Two critical damages of over 5,000 points appeared above the chieftain's head. As for Fire Dance, she appeared behind another skeleton captain and used Absolute Strike. Meyer 28,467. Fire Dance immediately followed up with a backstab, her attack triggering Thousand Transformation's critical point effect. The fragmented legendary weapon then transformed into a streak of silver light as it pierced and shattered the skeleton captain's sturdy armor. A frightening damage of my 19,482 points appeared above the skeleton captain's head. Is she even human? Fire Dance's damage shocked Autumn Goose and her team. Thoughtful Rain and Blue Bamboo were also shocked into silence. This was their first time they had seen their guild's upper echelons grind monsters. The difference between the way they normally grinded was like the difference between heaven and earth. In a party dungeon, a chieftain-ranked monster was a boss. In front of Fire Dance, however, it was no different than a common monster. Not a single one of Fire Dance's attacks dealt less than Midas 10,000 damage. Under the continuous bombardment of Zero Wing's core members, the three skeleton captains had not even had a chance to land a finger on Cola and the other two MTs. Meanwhile, Violet Cloud, one of the team's healers, had become one of the main damage dealers. Each of her numerous mana balls dealt over Bida's 600 damage to the skeleton captains. As a result, the chieftain's HPs fell at a rate visible to the naked eye. After just 20 seconds, the three skeleton captains and the remaining skeleton soldiers crumbled to the ground, transforming into piles of bones and dropping several pieces of equipment. They also granted every player with a significant amount of EXP. Chapter 813 Chapter 813 Frightening Leveling Speed Seeing the scattered bones and their rapidly rising experience bars, Autumn Goose and the others were at a loss for words. Facing hundreds of level 42 elites and three level 42 chieftains would be a challenge even for a 100-man team of level 40 elite players. Now, however, a dozen or so players had easily defeated these monsters. Although they had realized that there was a gap between them and Zero Wing's core members, this battle made it clear just how wide that gap was. This grinding and leveling speed is amazing. I wish we could level like this every day. Blue Bamboo sighed as she looked at her experience bar. She had gained more EXP in less than a minute than she usually obtained after two hours of grinding. They were leveling faster than a rocket. Moreover, the speed at which they were earning money was simply ridiculous. In less than one minute, they had gained six pieces of equipment. Nowadays, in God's domain, the higher a monster's level was, the lower its drop rate for equipment would be. They had killed many level 40 monsters before. Even when they killed level 40 elites, they rarely obtained any equipment. Only level 40 chieftains were certain to drop equipment. Even then, they usually only dropped one or two pieces. Among the six pieces of equipment they had obtained, four were level 40 bronze equipment, and two were level 40 mysterious iron equipment. Although they were not pieces of top-tier equipment, they could sell for quite a bit of money. Even after splitting the profits among the team, they would earn more than what an ordinary player earned in a single day. Shifang had intended to split the loot equally. However, Autumn Goose and the others rejected the offer. After all, they had not done anything. They also were not members of Zero Wing. They already felt uncomfortable about receiving a share of such a lucrative amount of EXP despite not contributing. As for Thoughtful Rain and Blue Bamboo, the two girls similarly rejected the offer. In the end, Shi Feng had no choice but to pass the equipment to Aqua Rose to store in the guild warehouse. Fire Dance, Flying Shadow, Minor Wind, Lure the Monsters. We'll clear the city's borders before we enter the city itself, Shi Feng commanded after he finished collecting the drops. In the Abyss battlefield, the basic strategy to capture a city was to eliminate the monsters in the outer edge. If they did not take care of the minions outside the city, once they started fighting in the city, a single roar from a boss could very well attract every single minion. The monsters would surround them, greatly increasing their chances of wiping. 
Hence, it was important to annihilate the monsters outside the city first. Moreover, in the Abyss battlefield, monsters in towns and cities had long respawn times. They didn't have to worry about endless respawning. They also wouldn't have to waste a lot of time getting out of the city. Following which, Fire Dance, Flying Shadow, and Minor Wind lured wave after wave of monsters towards Kola and the others. After the MTs had built up their aggro with the skeleton captains, Shi Feng would use Firestorm. Anyone else who possessed AoE skills would join him with their own attacks, finishing off the skeleton soldiers quickly. Afterward, everyone would focus their attacks on the chieftain-ranked skeleton captains. The team finished off a wave of monsters every five minutes, rapidly filling their experience bars. After three hours of hard work, Autumn Goose and the others reached level 35, whereas Blue Bamboo reached level 36. The five felt as if they were dreaming as they watched their absurd leveling speed. We're leveling so fast, I'm the same level as the boss now. Gunfire was flabbergasted by his own level. Autumn Goose and Deathwind had similar reactions. Even expert players needed to grind for two or three days just to reach their level. It should be known that there were 48 hours in a single day in God's domain. Now, however, they had only taken three hours to level up. Their leveling speed was ridiculous. Furthermore, the monsters outside the city were no threat to Zero Wings members at all. Finally, after grinding for over nine hours, the team had managed to kill all the abyssal monsters in South Lake City's outer region. Meanwhile, Thoughtful Rain and the others had reached level 37, whereas Fire Dance, Aqua Rose, and the other members of Zero Wing had reached level 39. As for Shi Feng, he had reached 81% of level 39. He was only 19% away from the level 40 threshold. After clearing out the monsters from the city's north side, Shi Feng led everyone into the city. South Lake City was far more dangerous inside its walls than it was outside. Abyssal monsters had a hierarchy. The lowest monsters generally lived in the outermost regions. As players ventured deeper into a city, they would encounter higher-ranked and stronger monsters. Rather than increasing inside the city, the concentration of monsters decreased significantly. However, it was not difficult to spot the skeleton warriors that roamed the city streets. Undead, Special Elite. Level 42 HP 550,000, 550,000. The city was also home to plenty of skeleton captains. Even a level 40, 100-man elite team would have to be extremely careful upon arriving here. One mistake could attract hundreds of skeleton warriors and seven or eight skeleton captains, leaving the team surrounded. Fortunately, Zero Wing's core members would have little trouble handling such a situation. They could defeat a monster army of such size with relative ease. However, Shi Feng's goal was not to level up, but to kill great lords. Hence, he prioritized scouting the city over grinding. I've discovered a great lord over here. Flying Shadow, who used stealth to scout the city, reported through the team chat. I'm in the city plaza. Only, there is another team of players fighting the great lord right now. Who are they? Shi Feng asked, surprised. The others were surprised and curious as well. South Lake City was many times more dangerous than monster towns in the Abyss battlefield. Even a level 40, 100-man elite team had to be extremely careful here. Their team had spent so much time clearing out the monsters around the city, yet someone had gotten ahead of them and had already begun killing a great lord. They're a 100-man team. These people are wearing a guild emblem, so they should be the main force of some guild. Flying Shadow reported as he observed the situation. The lowest leveled player is level 34, while the commander is level 36. Currently, they've dropped the Great Lord's HP by a third and have yet to suffer any losses. Field Great Lords were different from Dungeon Great Lords. They were a lot stronger. However, they did have a little less HP. The fact that the team had taken one-third of a level 40-plus Great Lord's HP without losing a single member showed that the team was extraordinarily strong. Hold on. I'll send you their battle video. Flying Shadow then started recording a short video before sharing it with the team. I've never seen their guild emblem before. I don't think that it's a Star Moon Kingdom guild. However, the fact that they can handle a great lord this well shows that the guild is certainly not ordinary. 
Upon receiving the video, they watch the short clip of this guild in battle. In the video, the corpses of abyssal monsters filled the wide fountain plaza. Meanwhile, a group of players faced a giant skeleton. The giant skeleton stood over 10 meters tall. The skeleton wore black, heavy armor and wielded two massive war axes. Undead, Great Lord, level 43 HP, 18,000 thousand, 18,000 thousand. The skeleton general brandished its war axes madly, each swing causing the earth to tremble. However, the players fighting the skeleton general were very coordinated. Their MTs guided the skeleton general's attacks to an area void of other people. Meanwhile, the healers and ranged damage dealers responded when and how they needed to, decreasing the Great Lord's HP continue, Owsley. Overall, the players were quite organized. This is interesting. I hadn't expected to meet them in a place like this. Shi Feng's lips curled up into a faint smile after seeing the players in the video. Chapter 814 Chapter 814 Legendary Guild These people have relatively good combat standards and equipment, but why haven't I heard of this guild before? Even after racking her mind, Aqua Rose could not figure out which guild these players were from. The Skeleton General displayed frightening power. Not only did it possess extremely high strength, but it was also very fast. Even for Cola, tanking this great lord would be a burden. Although these players did not possess an MT like Cola, who had extremely high defense and strength, they made up for the lack of strength with the cooperation of four MTs. The team's damage dealers also kept the boss in check. This made it possible to raid the Skeleton General. Moreover, the team's damage dealers and healers were very powerful. Almost all of them dealt over matter 1,000 damage with each attack, causing the Skeleton General's HP to decrease slowly but steadily. It was only a matter of time before they defeated the Great Lord. No ordinary guild was capable of such a feat. Generally, only the experts of famous large guilds could raid a level 43 Great Lord so easily. However, Aqua Rose knew nearly every famous guild in the virtual gaming world, but she had never seen this guild emblem before. Look, that skeleton general seems to be summoning a companion. Cola shouted as he watched the surrounding monsters gather towards skeleton general, who stood in the plaza's heart with a grim expression. The others were also shocked. They had not expected the boss inside the city to have a such a move. With this, killing the skeleton general would be far more difficult. After all, one was already required to go all out against a great lord. More monsters joining the fray might become the last straw that broke the camel's back. Everyone finally understood why Shi Feng had them clear out the surrounding monsters while on their way, rather than avoiding confrontation. This boss is too overpowered. It has lured another great lord. Flying Shadow, who hid in the plaza, stated as he watched the blurry figure fly straight towards the skeleton warrior. Undead, Great Lord. Level 40 HP, 17,000 thousand, 17,000 thousand. Although the agonizing Banshee had less HP than the Skeleton General, it was a magical class monster. It posed more of a threat than the first undead. The instant the agonizing Banshee arrived, she released a piercing screech, forcing over a dozen players into a confused state. These players lost all control over their bodies as they began behaving like raving lunatics. The sudden development was precarious for the team. Let's head over and take a look, Shi Feng said, laughing as he watched the agonizing Banshee massacre the team of players. It was not unusual that Aqua Rose had not heard of this guild. After all, the guild wasn't famous, it was an upstart guild. The guild's name was Immortal Light. Immortal Light was based in the Twin Towers Kingdom. The Twin Towers Kingdom and Star Moon Kingdom were adjacent to each other. Hence, Shi Feng knew quite a bit about the Twin Towers Kingdom. Although Immortal Light was only an upstart guild, it had performed exceedingly well in the competition for dominance over the Twin Towers Kingdom. It had stolen over a dozen cities from the first-rate guild, Emperor's Light, going as far as to occupy the third largest city in the Twin Towers Kingdom. In Shi Feng's previous life, Immortal Light had been one of Shadow's allies. However, Immortal Light was much stronger than Shadow had been. In God's domain, it was very difficult for a small guild to survive. Hence, these guilds needed to work together. However, Immortal Light was different from Shadow. 
After ten years of development in God's domain, it had become a first-rate guild and had occupied over half of the Twin Towers' kingdom. It had even dominated various cities in other kingdoms. Back then, it had developed into a guild that could rival even Ouroboros. Meanwhile, Immortal Light's guild leader, Sindh Hart, was a very famous expert in God's domain. He had been one of God's domain's twelve sacred elementalists in the past. Immortal Light also had several other Tier Five experts. Even Araboros and Emperor's Light had not dared to provoke the guild in the past. One could say that Immortal Light had been a legend in the Twin Towers Kingdom. In just a few years, a no-name guild had gone from an organization without any background or backing to a huge existence in the virtual gaming world, which even first-rate guilds feared and respected. The difficulty of such a feat was unimaginable. Shi Feng never imagined that he would actually encounter this guild so soon. Do you know them? Firedance asked curiously. She understood Shi Feng quite well. He would not attack someone unless they attacked him first. In addition, his pride as an expert would not allow him to steal a boss from a stranger. Even if he wanted the boss, he would simply wait for the two great lords to annihilate the other team. However, since Shi Feng chose to approach the battle, it was likely that he knew the guild. Something like that, Shi Feng replied vaguely, not knowing how to answer this question. In the past, he had been acquainted with this group from Immortal Light. In this life, however, they did not know him. Above the wide plaza, two great lords and dozens of skeleton warriors faced down the 100-man team. Split up the bosses. Rangers, kite the minions, the team's leader, Sindhart, shouted. He would not let his confidence waver, even though his team now had to fight two great lords simultaneously. On the contrary, he remained extraordinarily calm as he commanded the battle. Guild leader, that agonizing Banshee's AoE spells are too powerful. We've already lost eight people. Thousand leisures, lead your group and follow me. We'll suppress the Banshee together. Everyone else, focus on the skeleton general. Even Sindhart was helpless against the Banshee's shadow sweep attack. He could only lead a contingent to distract the Great Lord. Immediately, with Sindhart at the lead, ten players activated a barrier magic array around the agonizing Banshee, trapping the Great Lord behind a purple barrier. Narrow the magic array's area. Sindhart shouted as he watched the Banshee resist. Quickly, the ten players controlling the magic array shrank the magic array, sealing the agonizing Banshee inside a small purple globe and preventing the Great Lord from moving. Guild leader, someone's heading this way. How are there other people here? At this moment, even Sindhart grew anxious. To surely kill the skeleton general, they had even used their most precious barrier magic array. They could not afford any more surprises. This guild is quite impressive. They have an intermediate magic array as well, Aqua Rose stated when she saw the hovering purple ball. She could estimate the barrier's strength with a single glance. Currently, in God's domain, being able to obtain a basic magic array was quite a feat. One could probably count the number of intermediate magic arrays players had found on one hand. Yet, now, an unknown guild employed their own. The guild clearly had an extraordinary background. Friend, if you are interested in these two great lords, why don't we take them on together and split the loot equally? Sindhart shouted. Although the group that had just arrived only consisted of 20 players, the fact that this small group had made it this far spoke of their extraordinary strength. Without knowing Shi Feng and his team's motives, Sindhart was unwilling to give up on the Great Lords. Hence, he might as well make them an offer. After all, even if Shi Feng's team were strong, they could not handle two Great Lords at once. Guild leader, I think they're from Zero Wing. What? Zero Wing? Isn't that Star Moon Kingdom's number one guild? The players from Immortal Light were instantly on edge, wearing grim expressions. Chapter 815, Chapter 815, Zero Wing Takes Action. Why are they here? Sindhart was shocked when he saw Shi Feng and his team. Even in the Twin Towers Kingdom, Zero Wing was resoundingly famous. Starting out as a small guild, Zero Wing had faced down the various large guilds in White River City, becoming White River City's overlord. Later on, it successfully repelled the Dragon Phoenix Pavilion, a super first-rate guild. However, this was not Zero Wing's greatest achievement. Afterward, 
Zero Wing had occupied Stone Forest Town and won a war against the joint forces of the Star Alliance, a first-rate guild, and their various allies, instantly becoming the most sought-after guild in Star Moon Kingdom. In addition, Zero Wing was a guild of experts. Its guild leader, Black Flame, even ranked 51st on the God's Domain Experts list and had been given the title of Sword King. A recently established guild like Immortal Light could not possibly compete with a guild like Zero Wing. Those people are Zero Wing's upper echelons. Look, that's Aqua Rose. Fire Dance is here as well. Look over there. Isn't that Violet Cloud, Cola, Turtle Dove, Minor Wind, Shadow Sword, Blackie, and Ye Wumian? Why are so many of Zero Wing's experts here? Immortal Light's members panicked for a moment. Aqua Rose and the others were all publicly acknowledged, top-tier experts. One of them could exterminate a 100-man elite team by themselves. Ha! I never thought our guild would be so famous. Even a guild from another kingdom knows us. Blue Bamboo could not help her pride, as when she saw the Immortal Light's collective anxiety. I wonder when my name will be as famous as Big Sis Fires and the others? Fire Dance and her fellow echelons couldn't help but laugh when they heard Blue Bamboo's excitement. In reality, even they had never imagined that they would, one day, become famous experts in God's domain. Before they had met Shi Feng, they had never dreamed of such a thing. Now, however, they were targets for players' admiration. Is Zero Wing really such an amazing guild? When Autumn Goose overheard the Immortal Light's members, she was shocked. She and her companions were independent players from the faraway Dark Knight Empire. Hence, they had only heard rumors of Zero Wing's strength through the forums. They had never witnessed the guild in action. In their opinion, however, even the large guilds in the Dark Knight Empire were subpar at best. Hence, how strong could a guild from a kingdom possibly be? However, after witnessing these players' performance, they had a clearer understanding of the guild's strength. They felt that Zero Wing was different from those large guilds in the Dark Knight Empire. Yet, it would seem that Zero Wing was far more powerful than Blue Bamboo, and the official forums made it out to be. Guild leader Sind, rest assured, we aren't here to steal your bosses. However, we won't help you with these bosses either. If you can't handle them, give up. We'll take over from here, Shi Feng said, shaking his head as he responded to Sind Hart's proposal. Level 40-plus great lords were not easy to find, even in the Abyss battlefield. Moreover, a great lord dropped far better loot than a lord. Monsters of such rank generally drop top-tier equipment. Even in Zero Wing, level 40 top-tier equipment was still quite rare. Hence, he could not afford to split the drops. Hearing Shi Feng's answer, a huge weight lifted from Sindhart's heart. Zero Wing was the number one guild in Star Moon Kingdom. The guild's upper echelons would not break their word easily. Thank you, Sindhart said with heartfelt gratitude. Following which, Sindhart commanded his team to focus on the Skeleton General, which only had 60% of its HP remaining. The agonizing Banshee was still trapped inside the Intermediate Magic Array, so it was possible to kill the Skeleton General. Time passed quickly. Finally, Immortal Light's members reduced the Skeleton General's HP to 30%. Be careful, the Skeleton General is about to go berserk. Sindhart hurriedly reminded his team. Immortal Light's MTs began to prepare, activating their life-saving skills. The healers at the rear also readied themselves. Humans, I will devour you, the Skeleton General shouted, its eyes releasing a bloody radiance. Suddenly, the Skeleton General split into three copies of itself. All three were identical, even down to their HP bars. Amazing, this skeleton general actually knows a duplication skill. Aqua Rose exclaimed. Among the many bosses they had encountered, very few could duplicate themselves. Any bosses capable of such a feat were extremely difficult to fight. Suddenly dealing with two additional bosses could destroy a team's formation and rhythm. If not handled properly, it would not take long for the team to suffer annihilation. They're in trouble. Firedance stated as she glanced at the three skeleton generals. Each general radiated the same pressure. This meant that all three skeleton generals had the same combat power. It had taken almost everything the immortal light members had to deal with the one skeleton general. Now they had to take down three such monsters simultaneously. While Zero Wings members discussed the situation among themselves, 
several Immortal Light MTs were thrown into the air. Until now, the team had relied on the combined strength of three or four MTs to defend against the Skeleton General's attacks. Now that they had to fight three Great Lords at the same time, their MTs had to split up. As a result, they didn't have enough strength to tank the bosses. In ten short seconds, Immortal Light lost another eight members. Guild leader, at this rate, we'll most likely wipe. How did things come to this? Sindhart balled his fists, frustration filling his heart. They had already lacked enough members to deal with the Skeleton General. Furthermore, to deal with the agonizing Banshee, they had been forced to split their team and pull ten members away from the main fight. Now that the General had split into three, they didn't have nearly enough strength to face the boss. A single attack from one of the Great Lords could obliterate over 7,000 HP from one of their MTs. If the MTs did not block the attack with their shields, they might die instantly. Retreat, Sindhart commanded, gnashing his teeth. If they wasted any more time, none of them would leave this place alive. If they retreated now, at the very least, half of their numbers might survive. They can't hold on anymore, Blackie chuckled. Let's go then, Shifeng said. Hearing Shifeng's command, Zero Wing's members exploded into action. Kola and Ye Wumian charged at the fully regenerated Skeleton General, whereas Turtle Dove made her way towards the agonizing Banshee. We're going in now? Autumn Goose and the others were momentarily stunned, thinking that they had heard wrong. Although Immortal Light's members had already left, there were still two great lords in the plaza. What could they possibly do with a team of twenty players? What are they trying to do? The members of Immortal Light, who had escaped, were even more flabbergasted. Zero Wing's team had far too few members. Furthermore, to deal with the two great lords, their team of twenty had to split itself. This was insane, just as Autumn Goose, Thoughtful Rain, and the others struggled against their days, the battle against the two great lords had begun. Cola sent a shield of vengeance at the Skeleton General, taking more than 2,000 of the Great Lord's HP. He then followed up with a Hammer of Sanctions, eliminating another 3,000-plus HP and focusing the Great Lord's aggro on himself. Facing the Skeleton General's quick blow, Cola raised his shield and received the attack. He was immediately forced to retreat by six steps, both his hands numbing slightly. A damage of over 9 of 3,000 points appeared above his head. However, to Cola, who had over 18,000 HP, this damage was acceptable. That's a lot of strength. I can use this opportunity to test a move that I recently learned. Cola smiled. Seeing another of the Skeleton General's battle axes swiftly approach, he lifted his shield, blocking and pushing against the attack. As the attack sent Cola backward, he only lost around 1,700 HP, far less than the previous attack. Very quickly, Violet Cloud recovered his HP to full. Let's also begin, Aqua Rose said as she smiled at the agonizing Banshee. She then used Blue Fire Summon. Immediately, three Blue Fire Crows appeared on the battlefield and assisted Turtle Dove against the agonizing Banshee. Chapter 816 Chapter 816 Bullying a Great Lord What a powerful summoning skill! Autumn Goose and the others were shocked when they saw Aqua Rose's three level 39 elite ranked Blue Fire Crows. Generally, summoners could only summon one elite or a few common monsters. Aqua Rose, however, had summoned three elite monsters at one time. This was the equivalent of adding three powerful melee fighters to their team. Turtle Dove threw her shield at the agonizing Banshee, slamming it into the Banshee's head. Not only did this attack interrupt the Great Lord's Tier 2 spellcasting, but it also achieved a critical hit, dealing nearly minus 5,000 damage. The agonizing Banshee was enraged. She pointed a finger at Turtle Dove. Immediately, eight Black Fog Spears shot towards the Guardian Knight. These Black Fog Spears had significantly damaged the Immortal Light members when they had faced her. As the spears were incredibly powerful, even when the Immortal Light's MTs blocked the attack with their shields, they had lost nearly 4,000 HP. Worse yet, the Banshee had launched eight of these spears. Even an MT would lose their life if they received four or five spears. That won't work against me, Turtle Dove declared. Rather than retreating, she charged towards the Black Fog Spears. Just before the spears reached her, 
Turtle Dove raised her shield and leaped forward, smashing into one of the Black Fog Spears. The remaining spears simply flew past Turtle Dove's body, missing her completely. Boom! Upon collision, Turtle Dove was forced back by two steps. She lost nearly 1,800 HP. In the next moment, however, a healing light touched the Guardian Knight, returning her HP to full status immediately. That is an MT from Zero Wing. Sindhart was astonished as he watched Turtle Dove handle the agonizing Banshee's attack so gracefully. When their strongest MT blocked one of the Black Fog Spears, he had lost over 3,400 HP instantly. In addition, due to the incredible speed of the spears, he hadn't been able to avoid the following attacks in time. Generally, he would receive roughly three spears, destroying more than half of his HP. On the other hand, Turtle Dove had neutralized the Black Fog Spears with such ease. The other Immortal Light members were similarly stupefied when they saw Turtle Dove tank a Great Lord by herself. None of them could believe their eyes. Normally, they needed at least four or five MTs to rotate tanking a single Great Lord. Even so, there were times when they failed to hold the boss. Turtle Dove was definitely stronger than they were. However, the members of Immortal Light did not know that Turtle Dove currently wore a Tier 1 set equipment. Her plate armor was even epic rank. Although equipping the Divine Frost armor had caused Turtle Dove to lose the final set effect of the Yin Yang Walker set equipment, the former not only reduced the damage she took, but one of its passive skills also reduced the agonizing Banshee's movement speed and attack speed. Although the Black Fog Spears were quite fast, Turtle Dove could easily determine the best evasion route with the speed reduction effect. Moreover, Turtle Dove was a Guardian Knight. Her magic resistance was very high. With over 18,000 HP, she could even survive a direct hit from a Tier 2 spell. Very quickly, Cola and Turtle Dove had pinned down the two Great Lords. Now, everyone just needed to focus everything they had on two bosses. Are those monsters really great lords? Blue Bamboo felt as if she were dreaming as she watched Turtle Dove tank the agonizing Banshee without assistance. Even now, she alone had maintained Turtle Dove's HP at full. Normally, when she raided High Lords with Autumn Goose and the others, they needed at least three healers to focus on a single MT. Even so, their heals were not always sufficient. Yet despite facing a great lord, only she was the only necessary healer to keep Turtle Dove alive. Autumn Goose also wondered if the agonizing Banshee seemed very weak. She even doubted that the MT needed her assistance as she focused solely on damn age. However, Autumn Goose was very aware. The agonizing Banshee was not weak at all. Rather, Zero Wing's members were just that strong, which resulted in such a misconception. Only now did she understand why Shi Feng had been so confident, why all of these experts from Zero Wing were so confident. Now that the MTs had solidified their hold on the bosses, Zero Wing's members had no issue dealing sufficient damage. The Assassin class relied on speed to deal massive amounts of damage over time. Fire Dance, however, played the class differently. Standing behind the Skeleton General, Fire Dance launched streak after streak of silver light at the Great Lord. Despite the Skeleton General's incredible defense, the female Assassin's damage was mind-boggling. 9,480, 30, 30,121, 16, 916, 20,518. Shi Feng's damage was also impressive. None of his attacks dealt less than mighted 6,000 damage. From time to time, his chop achieved a critical hit, dealing over 20,000 damage with a single attack. As for the other melee classes like Shadow Sword and Rampant Blade, they never dealt less than 3,000 damage. With their powers combined, these several players devoured the Skeleton General's HP of 18,000 at a rate visible to the naked eye. Are they even human? The Immortal Light members were astonished. The total damage Shi Feng, Fire Dance, Shadow Sword, Rampant Blade, Blackie, and a few other core members of Zero Wing dealt was higher than their 100-man team's total damage. Previously, their attacks had only dealt over minus 1,000 damage to the Great Lord. Even Sindhart, the most powerful player on the team, had only dealt over Maya 2,000 damage to the Skeleton General. Shi Feng and Fire Dance, however, easily managed tens of thousands of damage. From time to time, they even dealt over minor 30,000 damage. 
despite the skeleton general and agonizing banshee being two daunting great lords against zero wing they were no different than helpless common monsters the two bosses could only struggle against the small team of players even with its prided speed and strength the skeleton general in particular rarely landed a hit on the guardian knight cola due to fire dance and shi feng's coordinated attacks even when the great lord used a tier two skill Cola easily took the hit with a life-saving skill. As for the team's healers, aside from the slight pressure they felt when the skeleton general used a powerful skill, they needed to do so little to keep their companions alive that they had time to join the attack on the great lords. In just five minutes, the skeleton general's HP fell to 30%. Wumian, pin one of them down and leave the other to me. Everyone else, Focus on the skeleton general. Cola is tanking. Shi Feng shouted after seeing the skeleton general begin to split itself into three clones. Although this move was quite powerful, all three copies shared the same HP. As long as they had enough players to tank the three skeleton generals, they could cope. As soon as the skeleton general had completed its cloning, Yiwumian lured one away. As for Shi Feng, he activated Heavenly Dragon's power. After all was said and done, a great lord was still a great lord. Unlike MTs, Shi Feng did not possess any damage reduction skills or very high defense. He didn't have a shield, either. If he wanted to withstand the boss's attacks, he had to rely on his own strength. Unfortunately, he could not contend with a level 43 great lord with his normal strength attribute. Only by activating a berserk skill could he pin a skeleton general down by himself. Among the many berserk skills Shi Feng possessed, Heavenly Dragon's power had the shortest cooldown, which was three hours. The Power of Darkness had a six-hour cooldown, whereas Blade Liberation had a ten-hour cooldown. The last one also had side effects he needed to worry about. Hence, Dragon's power was Shi Feng's best option. Moreover, Heavenly Dragon's power was his best-suited berserk skill for head-on confrontations. It was the best option against bosses. Chapter 817, Chapter 817, Suffocatingly Explosive Power What is he trying to do? Sindh Hart and the others were confused as they watched Shi Feng charge towards a skeleton general. No swordsman could solo a great lord. Even a berserker, a class famed for its strength, would fly through the air if they tried to block a great lord's attack with their weapons. Peng, Shi Feng used Killing Ray to block one of the skeleton general's descending battle axes. Sure enough, my attributes aren't high enough to deal with this great lord. The resulting impact had forced Shi Feng to retreat by three steps, his hand numbing slightly. Meanwhile, a damage of over minus 700 points appeared above his head. However, to Shi Feng, who had close to 50,000 HP after activating Heavenly Dragon's power, such a small amount of damage was, was nothing. His battle recovery regenerated nearly 500 HP Ever five seconds, Violet Cloud waved her staff, and immediately, a faint golden film blanketed Shi Feng's body. Bluish green life force flowed into the swordsman. Suddenly, a recovering status appeared over Shi Feng's status bar, recovering over 1 600 HP every 1.5 seconds for 15 seconds. In the blink of an eye, Shi Feng's HP was full. Seeing that its first attack had failed, the skeleton general swung its other battle axe at Shi Feng violently. Having predicted the skeleton general's attacks, Shi Feng sidestepped abruptly, using the abyssal blade to receive the descending battle axe while thrusting Killing Ray towards the skeleton general's armor. A streak of blue light flashed. Although Killing Ray could not compare to the fragmented legendary ranked thousand transformations, after equipping a magic device, its sharpness was only slightly weaker than the thousand transformations. As a result, it easily pierced the Skeleton General's robust armor. A critical damage of mighty 15,824 points appeared above the Skeleton General's head. The Great Lord bellowed, angry with the damage it had received. Suddenly, its battle axes released a strange, smoldering green flame as it swung the weapons at the ground. The ground instantly shattered, flames surging into the sky and covering a radius of 15 yards. Shi Feng had long since prepared for this moment. He jumped up and passed the skeleton general's head. He then used one of Killing Ray's skills, Summon Lightning. Arcs of blue lightning descended and struck the skeleton general's battle axes. The collision's impact was massive. 
Shi Feng then utilized the force of the impact to avoid the smoldering flames. He then activated silent steps and appeared behind the skeleton general, the sacred sword in his hand releasing a dazzling flaming glow. Flame burst. Fifteen brilliant explosions discharged behind the skeleton general, one after another. 48,167. Namjian 170,954. Nice 49,715. Fifteen damages appeared above the general's head, one after another. Killing Ray had a 50% critical rate. In the blink of an eye, the skeleton general lost over 1,000,000 000 HP. For a time, Autumn Goose, Sindhart, and the others were speechless. They sucked in a breath of cold air, not believing their eyes. Shi Feng's damage was insane. He had dealt over 1,000,000 000 HP. Even a level 40 chieftain only had so much HP. Shi Feng had the power to instant kill a level 40 chieftain. This power was no longer that of a player. This was the power of a humanoid great lord. However, Shi Feng did not think much of his attack. After all, his strength attribute was almost on par with a chieftain of the same level. After Heavenly Dragon's power doubled his strength, he surpassed ordinary lords of the same level. He had also used his sure kill skill, Flame Burst. Being capable of instant killing a chieftain of the same level was expected. Flame Burst was not called a sure kill skill for no reason. Shi Feng's Flame Burst had heavily wounded the skeleton general. The swordsman had destroyed nearly half of its armor. Several bones beneath the armor had even cracked. Focus on killing my skeleton general, Shi Feng shouted to his team. Not only Ha, D the general lost some of its combat power after receiving the several injuries, but its defense had also dropped significantly. Hence, dealing with this skeleton general would be much easier than dealing with the other two. Sure enough, in less than one minute, the skeleton general's HP fell below 500,000. Just before the general died, Shi Feng shouted once more, commanding, Everyone, switch to the Banshee! Turtle Dove, tank this skeleton general! What is Big Brother Yi Feng trying to do? Blue Bamboo asked, confused. If they finished off the skeleton general, it would become much easier to deal with the agonizing Banshee, yet Shi Feng decided not to kill the skeleton general. No matter how she looked at it, the decision was unwise. Blue Bamboo wasn't the only one who was confused. Experts like Thoughtful Rain and Autumn Goose didn't understand either. However, none of Zero Wing's members doubted Shi Feng's command. Immediately, they shifted their focus towards the agonizing Banshee. Turtle Dove swapped targets with Shi Feng. However, the agonizing Banshee couldn't care less about the sudden change as it continued to attack Turtle Dove with Black Fog Spears. I am your opponent. Shi Feng appeared behind Turtle Dove, the killing ray transforming into numerous streaks of blue light. Peng, peng, peng. Players usually suffered heavy injuries if the black fog spears struck them, yet Shi Feng easily shattered each one. Is this an expert of Star Moon Kingdom's number one guild? Sind Heart was astounded. He felt his chest tighten, struggling to breathe. Zero Wing was far more frightening than the rumors make the guild out to be. It was no wonder why even Emperor's Light, a first-rate guild in the Twin Towers Kingdom, feared Zero Wing, choosing to give up in Star Moon Kingdom entirely. After Shi Feng shattered the Black Fog Spears, he vanished, abruptly reappearing before the agonizing Banshee. Arcs of blue electricity circled his body. Tier 2 Taboo Skill, Instant Strike. For three seconds, Shi Feng's attack speed increased by 500% and his damage increased by 400%. Before the agonizing Banshee could react, over a dozen streaks of blue light wrapped around her body. 21,046. Nenny 43,248. 42,987. In the blink of an eye, the agonizing Banshee's aggro shifted to Shi Feng. However, even though Shi Feng now held the Great Lord's aggro, the situation had not changed. The agonizing Banshee was a magical class monster. Even as a great lord, her strength could not compare to Shi Feng's while he had a berserk skill active. As the Banshee began to cast another spell, Shi Feng struck, interrupting her casting. For three whole seconds, the agonizing Banshee could not use a single spell. Instead, she lost more than a million HP. Suddenly, Fire Dance appeared behind the agonizing Banshee, launching a sneak attack at the back of the great lord's head and forcing her into a fainted state for two seconds. She then used the Tier 1 skill, 5 Star Burst, minus 16,718, minus 34,297. 
Five numbers appeared above the agonizing Banshee's head in quick succession, only slightly lower than the damage of Shifeng's normal attacks while in a berserk state. Following which, the agonizing Banshee received a one-sided beating, her HP draining like flowing water. When her HP reached 30%, the Great Lord was thoroughly enraged. As the agonizing Banshee released a piercing scream, a massive black magic array appeared in the sky. Everyone immediately felt their strength leave their bodies. Crap! This is Spell Absorb's player's stamina! Fire Dance immediately noticed the abnormality. If players ran out of stamina, even with godlike combat power, they were helpless. At this rate, they'd run out of stamina in 30 seconds. After that, they would be sheep for the slaughter. Not today. Shi Feng, who had long since prepared for such a situation, switched to the Aura of Time and activated Absolute Time, freezing the mana fluctuations in the surrounding area. Although Absolute Time's duration on a Great Lord was less than 10 seconds, Int, erupting the agonizing Banshee's mana channeling, was enough. After losing its supply of mana, the gigantic magic array in the sky gradually dissipated. Seeing this, the members of Immortal Light finally understood how presumptuous they had been, thinking that they could raid South Lake City's great lords. Seconds flew by. Finally, both the Agonizing Banshee and Skeleton General's HPs were below 100,000. Shi Feng activated Divine Providence, significantly increasing his luck attribute. He then used Thundering Flash to finish off the Agonizing Banshee, before following up with a Thunder Flame explosion on the Skeleton General. After a momentary struggle, the agonizing Banshee and the Skeleton General fell to the ground, one after the other, dropping several items around their bodies. Chapter 818 Abyss Hellsythe, Editor, Fluffy Goblin Chapter 818 Abyss Set It's over? Autumn Goose wondered if she were dreaming as she stared at the two fallen great lords before her. In the current god's domain, great lords struck fear into every player's heart. Even a 100-man elite team, led by an expert, would find it extremely difficult to defeat one. They might even be annihilated. Yet, now, this team of 20 players had defeated two great lords simultaneously. Moreover, a few of the team members had held back. No matter how she looked at this situation, it simply could not be real. Looking at it now, Autumn Goose found that the Wind God Spear simply could could not compare to Zero Wing in terms of strength. They lived in entirely different worlds. If not for Thoughtful Rain, they probably would never have met Shi Feng and the other core members of Zero Wing. When she thought back to how they had tried to persuade Thoughtful Rain and Blue Bamboo to leave Zero Wing and join the Wind God Spear, she could not help her embarrassment. Rain, hurry up and collect their life force. If you do not collect them within five minutes after the Great Lords die, you will lose your chance. Shi Feng hurriedly reminded his companion. Thoughtful Rain finally woke from her daze as she retrieved the giant, pitch-black egg and collected the life force of the two great lords. While Thoughtful Rain collected the dissipating life force, Shi Feng gathered the loot the two bosses had dropped. The two great lords had dropped a total of seven pieces of equipment. Although this did not seem much, in the Abyss battlefield, this was a considerable harvest. It was easier to find high-ranking monsters in the Abyss battlefield than it was elsewhere. Hence, the drop rate of the top-ranking monsters had been reduced. With the increase in levels, monsters' drop rate for weapons and equipment also decreased. The drops this time are fairly nice. Joy surfaced on Shi Feng's face after he finished appraising the items with his omniscient eyes. Among the seven pieces of equipment, five were level 40 fine gold equipment. They had even obtained a piece of level 40 dark gold weapon. Ice Spirit Staff, Dark Gold Rank. Level 40 attack power plus 1045 strength 51, agility 47, intelligence 92, vitality 87, endurance plus 66. Casting speed increased by 15%. Magic damage increased by 20%. Casting range 5. When casting 20 cent chance to obtain the power of frost, causing 220% frost damage and reducing target's movement speed by 30% for 5 seconds. Additional passive skill, Frost Blessing, increases ice type spell effects by 30%. Additional active skill, Waterfall, causes 300% frost damage every second in a radius of 20 yards for 8 seconds, freezing everyone within range for 10 seconds. 
Effective radius increases by 10 yards every second. Cooldown, 3 hours. Once Shi Feng shared the Ice Spirit staff's information in the team chat, everyone fell speechless. Although the staff's basic attributes are average at best, it increases all of them. Moreover, its active skill is insane. This is the first time I've seen a skill that can cover a radius of 100 yards. Even stars of light can't compare to this waterfall. If one uses waterfall on a battlefield, it will devastate the enemy forces. It's a pity, though. It would be amazing if it were an epic-ranked staff. Large-scale destruction. Spells were priceless treasures to every guild in God's domain, not to mention waterfall, a spell with so much AoE range. On a battlefield, this spell could easily wipe out several thousands of players. In a battle of 10 or 20,000 players, this spell could decide the victor on its own. The active skill was worth more than an epic item. Shi Feng chuckled as he watched everyone admire the Ice Spirit Staff's active skill. Among the seven pieces of equipment and weapons, the Ice Spirit Staff's active skill was astonishing. However, rather than the Ice Spirit Staff, what surprised Shi Feng was the dark gray breastplate, Tay. A faint, bloody glow surrounded the armor, giving the equipment a creepy feeling. Sure enough, Divine Providence is a godly skill. Shi Feng could not help but sigh. He then shared the statistics of this item through the team chat. Upon seeing the breastplate's attributes, even the excellently geared core members gasped. Abyss armor, breastplate, level 40, level 60 equipment requirement, strength 700, defense plus 1240, level 40, magic resistance plus 10 strength plus 42, endurance plus 40, agility plus 35, abyss set equipment. Level 40, level 60 equipment requirement. Berserker set consists of eight parts, head, shoulders, chest, wrists, waist, legs, and feet. Set effect, two-piece effect, increases all attributes by 10%. Four-piece effect, all skill damage increased by 20%, attack speed increased by 20%, and movement speed increased by 15%. Six-piece effect, obtain abyss rampage skill, increases all attributes by 100%, and gain immunity to all control effects for one minute. Cooldown, 5 hours. 8 piece effect, obtain Blade of Abyss skill, transforms equipped weapon into the Blade of Abyss, increasing strength attribute by 300%, attack speed by 100%, and attack range by 10 yards for 15 seconds. Cooldown, 3 hours. What a powerful set. Blackie nearly drooled when he saw read the Abyss set equipment's information. The breastplate's basic attributes were only the equivalent of a dark gold item. However, as one obtained more pieces of the set, their combat power would grow exponentially. If one gathered all eight pieces, although the set's basic attributes might not compare to epic items, the boost it granted would only be slightly weaker than a set of epic equipment. Of course, it is strong. This set equipment is purely intended to increase violence. Even the Tier 1 set equipment for Berserkers cannot compare to the Abyss set. After reaching Tier 2 at level 50, no Tier 1 set equipment will be able to compete with the Abyss set, Shi Feng explained. The Abyss set equipment was the battlefield's representative equipment. Moreover, it was not exclusively for Berserkers. All classes had their own Abyss sets, and their attributes were all specialized for violence. These sets were extremely well suited for PvP. However, the Abyss set's drop rates were extremely low. It was practically impossible to collect all eight set pieces for a single class. If one could collect six pieces of a set, they could increase their prowess in combat far more than with a Tier 1 set equipment. After all, the Tier 1 set equipment only consisted of five pieces. If one gathered all eight pieces of an Abyss set, they would be practically invincible in PvP fights. I wonder if we'll gather a complete set. Aqua Rose was eager to find out. If they gathered all eight pieces and let either Rampant Blade or Shadow Sword equip the set, the Berserker's abilities would soar, becoming one of the guild's top fighters. Most likely, aside from Shi Feng and Fire Dance, nobody in the guild would be able to match them. All right, rest up. We're going to look for the next great lord soon, Shi Feng commanded as he stored the equipment. Meanwhile, Immortal Light's members who had watched from a distance had not recovered from their shock after watching Zero Wing easily defeat the two Great Lords. Their team of 100 had failed to defeat even one Great Lord, yet Zero Wing had taken two down at once with a team of 20. 
The difference between their guilds was like the difference between heaven and earth. Sindhart suddenly said, Follow me. Chapter 819, Chapter 8 and 19, City Deed, Hellsythe Edder, Fluffy Goblin. Chapter 819, City Deed. Huh, why are they heading our way? Aqua Rose asked when she saw the members of Immortal Light approach their team. Jokingly, she said, Are they going to try to plunder our loot? If they try to rob us, I won't mind giving them a final send-off. Firedance laughed as she unsheathed her thousand transformations that hung from her waist. Although the Immortal Light players were relatively strong, she was more than enough to annihilate their team. Moreover, she looked forward to the day someone tried to rob them. Previously, she had found plenty of inspiration during her time in the Dark Arena. This was the perfect opportunity to test some of her ideas. They shouldn't be that stupid. They should be able to tell the difference between our strength and theirs. Shi Feng laughed as he watched his teammates prepare for a fight. Sind Heart would be one of the twelve sacred elementalists of God's domain in the future. If he lacked the necessary insight to tell the difference in strength between their teams, he would never have been able to make Immortal Light a famous first-rate guild in the Twin Towers Kingdom. Thank you for your help. If not for you guys holding off those two great lords, none of us would be alive right now. Sindhart immediately expressed his gratitude upon arriving before Zero Wing's team, his tone containing a hint of respect. Sindhart's expert companions also stared at Zero Wing's members with reverence. The heavy pressure Fire Dance emitted, in particular, made them breathless. If these teams fought each other, they would most likely die in an instant. It's nothing, Shi Feng shrugged. If you guys are looking for great lords, we can help, Sindhart offered. On our way here, we encountered quite a number of great lords. Only, these great lords resided in concentrated areas. It's highly likely that you'll attract a second great lord while dealing with the first. Saying so, Sindhart sent Shi Feng the coordinates of those several great lords. Thanks. Shi Feng rejoiced when he received the coordinates. Sindhart had given him the coordinates for seven great lords. This would save them a lot of time searching for these bosses. Glad to be of help. Sindhart smiled. I don't believe that you came over here just to give me these great lords' locations. What's on your mind? Shi Feng asked. He could not help but laugh when he saw Sindhart's hesitation. In the past, even he had looked up to Sindhart. Countless small guilds had tried to gain Immortal Light's favor, yet now, watching this man struggle with his desire to ask for help, Shi Feng could not help but sigh. Hearing Shi Feng saying so, Sindhart released his tension with a sigh of his own and said, In truth, aside from thanking you for the help, I wanted to ask something of Zero Wing. Although this may be sudden, I don't have any better options right now. Guild leader, are you really going to ask? One of the guild's upper echelons asked with surprise. If they refuse and news of this leaks, we'll be in big trouble. Do you think we have any other choice? Sindhart grumbled, a deep sense of powerlessness touching his expression. He did not want to do this either. However, he could not think of a better plan. Only after encountering Zero Wing and seeing how powerful the guild was, did he find hope. This might very well be their last opportunity to escape their dire situation. The other upper echelons fell silent. Although they wanted to argue their guild leader's decision, they could not bring themselves to do so. However, this had certainly captured Shi Feng's interest. He could understand if Sindhart simply wanted to form a connection with Zero Wing. However, for a prideful person like Sindhart to place all his hopes in a stranger, the situation must be severe. Moreover, Shi Feng was familiar with Sindhart's personality. He was not someone who would sim, ply bow out of a challenge. Even when Immortal Light had fought a first-rate guild, Sindhart had refused to lower his head. He prioritized bonds and friendship over personal benefits. Otherwise, he would not have risked Immortal Light's extinction just to help an allied guild resist a first-rate guild. God's domain was only a game. Shi Feng could not imagine what could cause someone like Sindhart to despair. I wish to sell several plots of land in the Twin Towers Kingdom. I will sell these lands at 90% market price. I'd like to offer them to Zero Wing in exchange for coins or top-tier equipment of the same value, Sindhart finally said, 
after a long moment of silence. Sell land? Shi Feng was curious. Since when had Sindhart become a land broker? If they're rubbish lands, Zero Wing is not interested. Please rest assured, the lands are in Snowfield City and have a lot of potential, Sindhart said as he took out several Snowfield City deeds. These are close to the Underground Arena, the Adventurers Association, the Auction House, and the War God's Temple. Have you lost your minds? You're actually selling these? Blackie could not help his shock after seeing the deeds. Currently, most of the lands in major NPC cities with potential had been purchased already. It was extremely difficult to buy these lands, even if one could afford them. With God's Domain's blazing popularity, more people would join the game in the future. The value of these lands would soar. In less than half a year, these lands would be worth several times their current value. It was especially true for the lands in Twin Towers Kingdom's third-ranking city, Snowfield City. Yet, Immortal Light wanted to sell away these lands, at 90% market price, no less. This was simply inconceivable. They are indeed good plots of land. However, why are you trying to sell them to Zero Wing? Shi Feng asked. The Twin Towers Kingdom and Star Moon Kingdom shared many aspects. Both were medium-sized kingdoms. Although Snowfield City was no match for White River City in terms of status, it was its kingdom's third-ranking city. Many organizations would offer a high price for these lands. This, Sindhart fell silent for a moment. Shortly after, he sighed and said, It's not that I don't want to sell them, but nobody is willing to buy them. Why? The value of these lands will only increase in the future. Why doesn't anyone want to purchase them? Aqua Rose asked, slightly surprised. Even the lands in the 20th ranking city in the Twin Towers Kingdom would be highly sought after, much less the valuable lands in the third ranking city. Aqua Rose had personally ventured to other kingdoms to purchase several plots of land for the Candlelight Trading Firm, so she understood how popular these lands were. Because none of them wish to earn the ire of the Super Guild King's return, Sindhart said helplessly. When Zero Wing's members heard Sindhart's words, they were dumbfounded. King's Return was a veteran super guild. Even a super first-rate guild like the Dragon Phoenix Pavilion was nothing in comparison. Moreover, the King's Return's headquarters was in the Glory Empire, an empire located only a short distance away from Star Moon Kingdom and the Twin Towers Kingdom. Shi Feng was similarly shocked by this revelation. A small guild like Immortal Light had actually provoked a super guild like King's Return. No matter how he thought about it, this shouldn't be possible. Moreover, it would be child's play for King's Return to wipe Immortal Light out of existence. Immortal Light was no threat to the super guild at all. Gnashing his teeth, Sindhart stated, I don't want much for these five plots of lands. I only ask for 13,000 gold. Chapter 820 Chapter 820 a group of lunatics. Guild leader! Sindhart's asking price shocked the several upper echelons he had with him. These were five high-potential golden lands. I know what I'm doing. Sindhart barked, having made up his mind. Originally, he had intended to raid great lords for some level 40 top-tier equipment and sell the items. However, they were not strong enough to take down level 40-plus great lords. The only option they had left to earn a large sum of coins quickly was to sell these five plots of land. However, they could not sell the land to anyone in the Twin Towers Kingdom. King's Return had already declared their stance in the Twin Towers Kingdom, and nobody was willing to provoke the Super Guild. However, with Zero Wing's strength, even a super first-rate guild like the Dragon Phoenix Pavilion had been forced to back down. Hence, Zero Wing should not fear King's return at all. Moreover, only a large guild like Zero Wing had the financial strength to spend 13,000 gold. Zero Wing occupied a treasured land like the Stone Forest Town. The magic crystals and coins the town generated could tempt even first-rate guilds. Although there were guilds in their kingdom that did not fear King's return, these guilds would need a relatively long time to gather the required money. Unfortunately, Sindhart could not afford to wait. Thirteen thousand gold? Shi Feng had never expected Sindhart to sell these lands for so little. Based on the current market, these lands were roughly worth twenty thousand gold. Even at that price, many people would fight over them. Now, however, 
Sindhart wanted to sell them for 13,000 gold. Shi Feng could profit greatly if he bought them. Not to mention, Star Moon Kingdom and the Twin Towers Kingdom were neighbors. These lands could benefit Zero Wing when it expanded towards the Twin Towers Kingdom. It seems that Sindhart has been backed into a corner. Shi Feng could more or less understand Sindhart's current predicament after seeing the man's anxiety. In Shi Feng's previous life, however, Immortal Light had never ceased to exist. This showed that King's return had not wiped out Immortal Light in the past. Moreover, he had never heard of King's return attacking Immortal Light. Immortal Light had most likely relied on itself to solve this problem. All right, we'll buy these five plots of land, Shi Feng nodded. Only, we'll need some time to prepare such a large sum. Why don't we conduct the trade in three days? Three days? Sindhart pondered for a moment. Quickly, his tense expression relaxed as he responded, Thank you, I'll visit Zero Wing personally. Following which, Sindhart led his guild members away from South Lake City. Guild leader, are we really going to oppose King's return? Aqua Rose asked Shi Feng through a private message. The Dragon Phoenix Pavilion could not compare to King's return. Moreover, Glory Empire was not far from Star Moon Kingdom. Once mounts were available in God's Domain, the Super Guild's threat to Zero Wing would not be a laughing matter. Don't worry, we're just conducting business. If we stop doing business just because a Super Guild demanded it, we might as well give up competing for dominance over God's Domain, Shi Feng said, shaking his head. Moreover, this isn't a major issue. If King's Return were truly angry, it would have annihilated Immortal Light already. If the Super Guild struck, Immortal Light would have no power to resist. Sindhart had helped him in the past. Now, he was only returning the favor. Moreover, he could make a huge profit with this trade and secure Sindhart's gratitude. If Sindhart owed him a debt, he might be able to poach Sindhart into Zero Wing in the future. Why wouldn't he accept such an offer? Indeed, if we can obtain those five plots of land, the Candlelight Trading Firm can start its development in the Twin Towers Kingdom. Aqua Rose agreed with Shi Feng's reason. Zero Wing was no longer the weak, little guild it had been. If they cow, ered from a such a small issue, developing the guild in the future would be a problem. If King's Return truly wanted to deal with Zero Wing, it would have to consider its options carefully. The Super Guild was not powerful enough to annihilate Zero Wing in Star Moon Kingdom. Zero Wing really is amazing. They're not even afraid of King's Return? Deathwind had never imagined that Shi Feng would agree to Sindhart's offer so decisively. For a moment, he was at a loss for words. The Wind God's spear was already impressive for standing up against the first-rate guilds in the Dark Knight Empire. However, Zero Wing was far more amazing. The guild was not even afraid of the titans of the virtual gaming world. I wonder when the Wind God's spear will conduct itself like Zero Wing? Deathwind's mind wandered. Maybe joining a guild like Zero Wing isn't a bad idea. At this moment, Autumn Goose envied Thoughtful Rain and Blue Bamboo. After Immortal Light departed, Shi Feng led the team on a hunt for more great lords. With the coordinates Sindhart had provided, the team quickly cleared a path towards these great lords. The great lords behind city walls were no challenge for Zero Wing's core members. The only issue they encountered was their berserk skills cooldowns. Fortunately, however, not every great lord required their berserk skills. For two days, Shi Feng and the others spent their time either killing great lords or clearing a path through random monsters towards great lords. Time passed leisurely as they learned more about each other. Over these two days, their experience bars had risen rapidly due to the large mobs of monsters they killed. Not only had Shi Feng reached level 40, but Aqua Rose and the others had also hit level 40. This is the last one. Thoughtful Rain looked at the fallen Great Lord as she collected her 20th Great Lord's life force. Oh? Not bad. We actually got another Abyss set piece, Shi Feng said after appraising the three pieces of equipment he had picked up. Smiling, he said, Now, we only need two more to complete the Abyss set for Berserkers. Although he had used Divine Providence for every Great Lord they had killed during the past two days, the Abyss Set equipment's drop rate was simply too low. Even with his boosted luck attribute, a limited number of pieces had dropped. 
Fortunately, the great lords in South Lake City only seemed to drop the abyss set for berserkers. Otherwise, they would not have gathered six pieces. Our job is finally done here. Autumn Goose released a sigh of relief after watching Thoughtful Rain collect the final life force. If not for Zero Wing's help, they would never have killed 20 level 40 great lords in three days. In the end, the level 100 tier 3 NPC would have hunted them down until they quit God's domain. However, after realizing that they had completed their quest, Autumn Goose was slightly disappointed. While grinding monsters and raiding bosses with Shi Feng and his team, not only had they enjoyed chatting with each other, but she had also learned several techniques from Zero Wing's core members. Now that their quest was complete, they would have to go their separate ways, and she could not help her slight reluctance. Leader, since we have completed the quest, it's time to deal with the other issue, right? Fire Dance asked as she turned to the gigantic bone dragon in the sky, a glint of excitement flashing in her eyes. The rest of the team laughed at Fire Dance's jubilance. It was definitely not their style to leave a Grand Lord alone. To avoid any unnecessary risks, they had avoided challenging the Frostbone Dragon. Now that they had finished their main objective, however, they had to kill the Grand Lord. That's a level 45 Grand Lord you're talking about. Autumn Goose could not believe that these members from Zero Wing actually considered raiding the dragon. They were insane. How can we possibly win against that with so few people? It might have been impossible before, but it is definitely possible now, Chief Ning said, laughing. He then retrieved a dark gold flute from his bag. Complex runes decorated the flute, and it emitted a faint pressure, 